welcome to Calculations. I'm Gary Johnson, and we've got our special guest, Mesa. <laughs> For you all who don't know about Mesa, you've been living under a rock. But uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, Mesa. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, in preparing for this interview, there's one thing I found out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a loyal fan, seen you about seven times at the Birchmere in Alexandria outside of D.C. Mm -hmm. Your fans are fiercely loyal. <laughs> yeah, they I mean, are. Fiercely loyal. How does that make <laughs> you feel? Amazing. And I appreciate it with all my heart. It's, it's beautiful. You know, um, one of the things that I've known over the years, and it didn't hit me until I was preparing for this interview, you've recorded a lot of covers of other people's songs. Yeah. And you don't get to do that if you ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many covers, <laughs> do you know how many covers of other people's songs you've actually done? Oh my gosh. It's past uh, probably 40 or 50. 40? 56, 56, 56? by my count. Yes. Wow, really? <laughs> including including Christmas songs. Wow. And some of my favorites. I got a list of some of my favorites. Ain't no sunshine. Am I dreaming? Oh wow. Bet you by golly, wow. Can we talk? <laughs> Family affair. Happy feeling. I can't wow. help it. If I ever lose this heaven. <laughs> I try by Angie Bofield. I mean, it goes <laughs> on and on. Oh, wow. Gil Scott Heron, The Bottle. I mean, mm -hmm. do you have any of, are any of those your favorites? Uh, I, I think I, I love all of them. I, they were music, the music that I grew up listening to. And, you know, uh, I just pay homage to the, the originals that wrote and created the songs. You know, that it's just that I love the music so much. And I just, you know, just grateful to be able to sing them. That's good. Tell mm -hmm. us about your background. I know about it, but you know, for people who just now, you know, finding out about you or stumbling on here, tell us <laughs> about your background. Um, well, I started, uh, wow, I started singing when I was six years old. I, well, I sang before that, but really I knew I wanted to be a singer when I was six. My mother took me to see Pearly when Melba Moore came out on stage oh, and started singing. I knew that was what I wanted to do the rest of my life. So I started pursuing that, you know, in school. I did a lot of theater and I did some talent shows and stuff all through high school. Then I went to Morgan State University, became part of the Morgan State University Choir, and uh, you know went around the world with Dr. Nathan Carter, who was the head of the choir and, and the department chair. So, you know, we had a great time. You know, a great time of music learning. There was always music in our household all day long. We woke up to the Gap Band get up in the morning. My mother would blast <laughs> that every morning to make sure we got up. Uh, so, you know, and it was music all around us. So that's, that's what I cut my teeth on. Um, and, I, and after, uh, in my last year at Morgan State University, uh, my best friend, Kim Brewer, who was already singing with Stevie Wonder, uh, came to Baltimore with Stevie to sing with the choir for Martin Luther King celebration. And she asked him if I could audition. He was looking for an alto voice. And I auditioned after that concert and passed the audition, but I asked Stevie, if I could uh, finish my degree, I had one year left. I said, I want to finish my degree, hand it to my parents, and then could I come to California then? That put me in the right place at the right time because a year later, he was working on the soundtrack for Jungle Fever with Spike Lee, and I got a chance to sing. My first professional background session was on these three words and, uh, oh, yeah. and, and several other songs uh, on that album. And so uh, I was working with Stevie Ford, we toured with uh, Spike Lee for the next few months. And then uh, Stevie went on a big Brazilian tour and I uh, couldn't go because I was a newbie. So um, I had to get a job. So I got several jobs in LA trying to survive. And one of the jobs was singing, uh, doing demos for a musician named Stephen Harvey from uh, Scotland. And uh, he told me one day, he said, Mesa, I, I wanted to call you my best friend in England. His name is Bluey. He's looking for a new American singer for his band, Incognito. Are you interested in auditioning? And I was like, absolutely. So about two weeks later, Bluey called me on the phone. We spoke about music. And he said, Mesa, um, can you sing a little bit for me? Sing Don't You Worry About a Thing. Uh, not knowing that he had written the track for that. He was definitely planning on recording. And I said, OK. He said, change the key and sing it again. And I did. And he said, OK, we'll call you in a few days and tell you when your audition is. And the next morning, his manager called and said, hi, Mesa, I don't know what you sang to Bluey last night, but you got the gig. We're going to fly you over. <laughs> so they flew me over to England uh, two weeks late. After that, 
at the end of December, flew me to England and I uh, lived there four and a half years, recorded the albums, Trials, Vibes and Scribes and Positivity with them. And then uh, we were at the North Sea Jazz Festival in 1994. And after the show, a man walked up to me from GRP Records, his name's Carl Griffin. He said, Mace, I'm the head of A&R at GRP Records. I wanna know if you are ready for your solo career. And I was like, oh, okay. So they flew me wow. to New York. I uh, had meetings with them in New York and they signed me that day. And uh, I did my first album titled Mesa in 1995. And now I'm working on uh, number 14. Since then I, I worked with Shawnee Entertainment for nine albums, including my Christmas album. And then I did one last uh, album for them called Love is the Battlefield. And after I've left, after I finished that album, I decided I wanted to own myself for the rest of my life. And I started my record label called Blue Velvet Soul Records. And now I'm putting out my 14th solo album entitled Music for Your Soul. Wow. So you get that <laughs> from GRP. That's Dave Grusin's uh, company. Mm -hmm. All the way up to now. What's that cover? About 32 years? 32 years I've been in the industry. Yep. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. You know, um, when I was listening to you, I had a flashback to <laughs> your shows. Mm -hmm. This some point in your show, you talked about blue. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> the last time I saw you, we had a table of about 10 people and you, you put it out there and people were just, they were just mesmerized. <laughs> so that's what, that's what, I mean, that's what, that's what happens. That's yeah. what happens at your show. I mean, uh -huh. I don't think I've seen anybody as much as I've seen you, you know, oh, well. <laughs> really. Thank now that you. I think about it, you know, I saw Stevie <laughs> Wonder at the MGM uh, about two years ago mm. and I really had forgotten about his entire body of work. Oh my gosh, show. amazing. And he's like, oh, you know, I wrote this for Aretha Franklin. Oh, I wrote this for, and I'm like, whoa, I had forgotten about <laughs> right. all his songs. Oh yeah. We have a, um, we got a contest going on here in the office and mm -hmm. uh, everyone has to name, we're going to get together on Saturday. Everyone has to name or list their top 10 R and B love songs. Wow. What's your number one R and B love song? Ooh, number one R and B love song. I, that's it's hard. I mean, I've been struggling. Own? I mean, I get. I, I you get can, you can put your own in one. there. Shoot, you can put your own the, in the there. waters would be number one for me, I guess, after all these years. Oh, yeah. Deep waters. Definitely that. Let's take a look at a live performance. You sing Deep Waters. Is it a cry? For me to be feeling this way, I'm going out of my mind, and there's no change from a runaway life. Is it a dream? That I'm throwing in the wind. I should have 
Muddy Waters. That is a great, great performance. Let's get back to the interview. Hmm. Yeah, I, I came up with um, uh, Let's Stay Together by Al Green. Oh, Al, absolutely. Yes, but but you know what? It's like a barroom argument. So it's going to be right, like it is. There's so many. I mean, I yeah. like um, uh, the the makings of you with, with, the, with the from the Claudine album. I mean, all oh, that. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, there's so many. <laughs> oh my goodness, that, it, it's never, so I don't much think stuff going on. Do the top ten. It's hard. It's it's hard because we grew up. We had so much great. We've had so much great music. I mean, it's phenomenal, legendary music that it's uh, it's hard to choose. You know, how would you describe your singing style? I tried to. Uh, mm -hmm. describe it uh, to somebody and they said, Mesa, I'm not so sure if I've heard of her. And I said, you ever heard of Incognito? And they said, oh yeah. I said, then you've heard of her. You <laughs> right. <know? laughs> right. So I was trying to describe this style as kind of a Nancy Wilson or Anita Baker, but <laughs> you know how to just phrase these, you know how to <laughs> put some phraseology on me. How would you describe your style? Um. I don't know. I, I guess I just see myself as a jazz funk soul singer. That's all I that's all I know. I, I just try to um, I mean, I've had so many influence, Sarah Vaughn, Ella Fitzgerald, Colin McRae, Billie Holiday. Uh, those are my heroes. Like Ter Stanley Turrentine. I mean, Miles Davis. I mean, I have a lot of influences, you know, Patti LaBelle, Thelma Houston, uh, uh, Phyllis Hyman. I mean, we can go on and on. The Commodores, the you know, it's like it's so many influences in my my music and my voice. I think because of what I grew up on, what I listen to every day in this household. You know, it's just like it's it's all they're all in there somehow. You know, you've um, done some duets also with some dynamite. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen you with Jonathan Butler, mm -hmm. uh, Will Downey. I mean, mm -hmm. Bill Pear. I mean, Stokely, I mean, Dwelling. Yeah. Frank McComb. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about jazz. I'm not talking about the genre. Let's talk about your song. <laughs> Tell us uh -huh. about jazz. Oh my gosh. Jazz is uh, doing amazing. He's almost 23 years old. he will be 23 in a few weeks. And uh, he just got his first apartment. He's a photographer, videographer, music production. He does a lot. He's uh, He graduated college with honors. Um, he's strong and healthy. He started out, uh, I gave birth to him while I was in Osaka, Japan with Incognito. I was six months pregnant. He's born at 25 weeks. He was only two pounds when he was born. Um, I had to leave him in the hospital and come back to America and wait for him to gain weight, then go back to Japan and get him and bring him home. And, uh, you know, doctors told me that he wasn't going to be able to function by himself at all. And we have a beautiful miracle of a man. He's one of the most beautiful, spirited people I've ever met in my whole life. And he's just a wonderful person. He has a beautiful girlfriend. He's he's it's a, a loving, peaceful man. And I'm just so very proud of him. Wow, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Music for your soul. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I listened to that first single, saw a video. Uh, <laughs> tell us about Music for Your Soul and what you're doing, you know, with your record company. You're owning your own stuff. Yeah, um, well, Music for Your Soul, the, my 14th solo album, I decided that I wanted to do it big because it is on my own record label. It's number 14. And uh, I decided to, in the year 2022, I originally wanted to do 22 songs, but we broke it down to 19. So I have 19 songs in this album. I wanted it to be a long playing record like what we grew up with. Uh, I know right now everybody's doing EP, six songs here, 10 songs here, you know, five songs there. And I, I just didn't want to do it that way. I wanted an experience of me helping you clean your house or drive long distances or or just chill and think about nothing but lay on the beach and listen to the album all the way through. I wanted yeah. that experience instead of, um, you know, the way it has been in the, in the past. And so that's why I want to, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> interview. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted it to be a, a an experience, and so I, you know, it took me throughout the pandemic. You know, it started. I started the album in 2018, 2019, and then we had the pandemic, and then we had all these things happen. So um, I had to. It took me a long time to to pay for the album um, as an independent artist, um, 
and independent record label owners. So uh, I think right now I'm starting an Indiegogo campaign to help me pay for marketing. Because what I wasn't happy with with my previous uh, experiences uh, is that I didn't think I was marketed or um, what do you call it, marketed and or uh, promoted. promoted well. And so that's why I wanted to um, do this myself this time and try to do better than what I think I've had before. So, but, but it's very expensive. So that's why I started this uh, Indiegogo campaign to help me pay for, uh, to set the record up really well so that we can get TV and, and, and radio and, and all the marketing we can. We're going to put that up on the, on our uh, website so people can uh, go there. We're going to make it real easy a mouse mm -hmm. click and then they can do what they yeah. want to do is anybody yeah. that you haven't worked with that you would like to um i would love to work with the singer kim or gregory porter uh those are two singers that i you know i would like to work with right now um uh, there's so many i could choose from but those there's those two i haven't uh had a chance to work with yet i want to circle back to the music business the business mm -hmm. of music You've been in it 32 mm -hmm. years. Uh, what are some of the things, mm -hmm. I call this uh, uh, stop, start, continue. What are some of the things that singers in the music business should um, start doing? Um, wow, start surrounding yourself with uh, great, a great attorney, for one, one thing, um, to continue to hone your craft and become who you are authentically, not trying to pattern yourself after anybody else. Uh, understand um, what singers need to understand is that social media is king right now as far as um, uh, getting your stuff out there. Um, it's just, and, it's, and also independent radio, those two work combined uh, to, to help build your brand, uh, help, help build who you are. Um, you know, and it seems like with social media, especially, it seems like when you're big on social media, radio catches up and they come they come to you. So that's why I was saying people should should really focus on social media right now. Tell us about whatever. Well, uh, whatever is a song that was written by bassist David Dyson. Uh, he sent it to me a few couple years ago now. And he's and I listened to the lyrics and I was like, hmm, I don't know if uh, they're a little too young for me. So the the gorgeous songwriter, uh Shemaine. She uh, asked her, because you changed a couple lines in it, and she did, and so it kind of fit more of what women my age would say, I guess. So she did, and so we um, recorded the song, and uh, my, my longtime producer, Chris Big Dog Davis, uh, helped with the production of it, and, uh, and we just got a, a big stepper's hit, it seems. It's, uh, it's, got, it's really popular, the video's doing well, the, the single's doing well, and I'm just very grateful that it's out there. <laughs> Spell it out for me Cause I, I I wanna make sure I'm giving everything you need And I don't wanna miss a detail I've gotta get it all right Cause if I give it to you good I can promise that we should be making good love all night Tell me do you want dinner on an ocean front Or do you wanna flex and stunt Cause we can hit the city in my black dress Boy we can flaunt I know you love showing me all Let's get rockin', no limit on the day, so we ain't stopping. Do what you want, boy, go and get it poppin'. Anything that you want, that you need, all you gotta do is ask me. Try to make it so hard for me Cause you Know good and well that I'll do anything to please And I'm hoping that you take advantage Of everything that I'm offering Cause I can fully guarantee That you'll never have nobody like me No boy Cause I can be a dream 
Take you on a new fantasy Show you things that you ain't never seen Cause I can blow your mind wide open with a new reality Cause what you're yearning for is in me Boy, I swear If you love me, I can take you there Anywhere and everywhere Just give me the okay and I'm on my way And now I'm here, so tell me what you say And there you have it. That is Mesa's newest single and video. Whatever. You know, uh, your fans, I mean, fiercely loyal. Yes. Uh, it's they, beautiful. They, yeah. I mean, I think that has a lot to do with you. Oh. People can relate to you. I mean, mm-hmm. every time I see you and I try to bring different people, I always try to sponsor the office or bring different people. Oh. With <laughs> and when you start talking, and I look over and see some of the ladies are like, yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, that's right. Yeah, they know I've been through it. And I think, you know, that's the, the best part about this whole thing. I get to help people who have, I try to help people who have been through similar situations as myself and kind of talk it out, sing it out, you know, get the feeling out because it's hard when you go through things and you think you're all alone. It's uh, It makes it harder. But when you understand that somebody else has been through it and you can, kind of laugh through it or, or talk your way out of it. You know, it's, it helps ease the, the pain of what a lot of people go through. Yeah, Men, male you know, and female, everybody goes through it. Oh, no, no. It, it's it's gender neutral. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> relationship pain is relationship pain. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, this is an odd question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Mm-hmm. What is your earliest or most vivid recollection of being or feeling different? If you've ever felt wow. that. Different. Well, I think um, I would say junior high school. Yeah, okay. I think when I, when I started, when I joined, when I started, yeah, that, that kind of, around 12, 12 years old, uh, I started feeling like, I just was never a, a join the crowd kind of person. I always did things after the fact, like, I got my first Jerry Crow after it was over. The <laughs> shirt was over, like, <laughs> you know, I did stuff like that. You know, that was my thing. Like, I didn't want to do it while it was happening. I wanted to do it afterwards or or do it, it be before everybody. Or not. You know, I, I didn't really care. I think when I was a kid, my parents had us kind of sheltered, had me sheltered. And I was, you know, very content being here, reading books. I remember one summer, I read 150 books in one summer. I was so wow. proud of myself. Yeah, Ooh. I was just had my head down. It's just, I didn't do anything, watch TV. And uh, that's when Nas Land, I was Nas Land fan. So I watched Nas Land and all this stuff. 
and, and read books and listened to music. And that's all I did for the whole summer. And so um, I remember doing stuff like that. So I wasn't really a person to go out and hang out, do clubs, do parties and all that stuff. My dad really wouldn't let me. So, so I was at okay. home a lot. Mm. I'm coming down to one of my final questions. The name of this show is called Calculations. Mm -hmm. So I define calculations as you know, decisions that we have to make sometimes, sometimes in milliseconds to be successful. Mm -hmm. What are some of the calculations that you've had to make in your career mm -hmm. to get to where you are today? Wow. The first calculation was to ask Stevie, could I come a year up to California a year later? The second one was to trust Bluey and his people to take that trip to England when I didn't know anyone in England. Wow. Uh, at 24 years old, you know, that's unheard of, like almost today, because there's so much, you know, sex trafficking and all those things going on. So you never could trust, you know, my parents had to trust that it was okay for me to do that at 24 years old. And, wow. uh, but I had a return ticket and I just knew that I, just, I knew my life was going to change. And I just knew, I just had this faith, this, this unwavering faith that I was protected by God and I was going to go and see what happens and, and I will get back home no matter what. So that's what I thought. And that's how I felt. And I think the other calculation would be, um, of course, definitely um, taking that chance when that, when Carl walked up to me and asked me, was I ready for my solo career? Uh, when I was already doing really well with Incognito and taking that leap um, to be a solo artist because I, my father was sick at the time and he was dying and my mom, I didn't want her to be alone. So I, it was a perfect timing for all of that um, to go back home and, and start my solo career and try to, you know, navigate my life through that, that way. Okay. So I made, I made quite a few more the calculations of, you know, going to Japan at that point of my pregnancy, even though I had complications the whole time uh, I was pregnant the whole six months. I was every hospital, every city we went to, because it was a, in a big world tour we were on. So that whole six months, I got pregnant during the rehearsals. So the whole six months, uh, I was sick. So that last gig was to go to Japan to make enough money to stay home on bed rest for wow. the last three months. Uh, I, made, I made that decision to go there. And even though my baby was born prematurely, he was in the best hospital in the world for premature babies at that time. Wow. And so that's, that's a God-given calculation. I mean, God was looking out for me and him and uh so that's why he's healthy and strong to this day with no issues okay hey i gotta talk about kitchen karaoke oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh cool that is i never even heard of that i mean i've been i've, been, I've tuned in a couple times you know uh -huh. um <laughs> you like it <laughs> yeah i love this it. it's um i started it in 2016 uh, my friend Walter Beasley, who's been my mentor for a long time, he's, he encouraged me to do this new thing called Facebook Live. And oh, I said, yeah. oh, I'll try it. I don't know. I'll try it. So I, I said, well, I got, he said, no, they said, this is a way to reach your people. You should, you, you should do it. It's a, it's a good way to reach your people. So I was like, okay. So I went on to introduce my new website I had just made. And I said, hello, everybody. I made a new website. I want to talk to you. So I'm going to sing for you for a little bit. So I just turned on my computer to my tracks. And I had a little wonky microphone and I just sang to people for a little while. And they said, oh, you're going to do this again next Sunday? And I was like, okay. So I, every Sunday I started singing on, you know, from 7.30 to 8.30 or 7.30 to 8.00 for half an hour. And then it became longer and longer. Now it's like an hour and a half, you know. And um, so during the, when the pandemic came, you know, first, you know, all my, a few of my colleagues were ragging on me about, you know, oh, you sing from your kitchen. You're going to get no work like that. People can see you for free. Why would you do that? And then when the pandemic came, they were all calling me, asking me, so how do you set this up? How do you do this? <laughs> well, I've been doing it for almost four years before that started. So the pandemic hit. So yeah, it's just, um, it's just been an amazing ride. I mean, the only issues I have right now is that Facebook has shadow banned me because they don't understand that it's me performing my music. So they keep, you know, blocking me and mute me. They did send us all this crazy stuff. And so I had to find an attorney that will help me uh, so that I can be what they call whitelisted, so they won't won't uh, touch it. But if the, the, right now it's messed up. I had to figure out how to fix it. But we'll we'll work on that, and um, hopefully for the future for karaoke, there's 
you know, I do, I do cooking on karaoke. I sing and cook at the same time. I have special guests. Um, we had really, before the pandemic hit, we had a lot of special guests at a good time, having people over and having big parties and I will cook and, and sing. And, and we have people come in and sing and play keyboards. I kept Frank McComb did. And then I get to feed them afterwards. So we, I just enjoy, I enjoy entertaining. This house I grew up in is a entertainer's house. My parents entertained here a lot. There were a lot of blue light, the basement parties here. Oh, yeah. uh, so so to, to carry the tradition on, uh, it's just been a, a wonderful thing. That is great. That is great. Any final words to us and to the people who are watching this interview? Thank you. Thank you for everybody, <laughs> the people who are, are new and people who are, are you know, old and, and they've been following me for 32 years. Thank you so much for your support. You have enabled me to feed myself and my son for a very long time. My family, they help take care of my family and pay my bills. And uh, I don't take that for granted, not one day, because I remember being on my parents' basement floor, wondering how I'm gonna get from there to where I am today. And uh, by the grace of God and everybody's love and support, I am here and I'm, I'm gonna be here for a while, I believe. So thank you very much for your support. Mesa, it has been a pleasure. It thank has been you. a pleasure having you. And I'll thank send you some stuff after this.